In this video, we're going to examine how to build an app to play a simple video game. So how do we do animation, for example? And we're also going to explore using multiple screens in order to distinguish between the app starts and the game starts, which are really two different things. So let's go ahead and start a new project. We will call this simple game. And here it is. And for the title, um, you know, we will say, uh, I'm going to just call this the start screen initially. Might come up with something catchier later, but for now, I'm calling it the start screen to emphasize what it is. It's going to be a place from which you can click a button to start the game. We don't necessarily want the game to be in action and moving the minute that you open the app. So we're going to put on a button that will allow us to start a game. And I'm going to rename this the start button. So when the game starts, it needs to go to a new screen. And this introduces a concept we haven't really looked at yet, which is that an app can contain more than one screen. If we want to add a new screen to an app, we can click on the Add Screen button up here. So I am going to call this screen Game Screen. And I've now added an additional screen. So we can jump between them by going over to this drop down menu. We can look at screen one, our start screen. We can jump down here to the game screen whenever we want. Going back to the start screen, let's program the start button. So when the start button is clicked, we want to go to the game screen. So we go to the control menu and we scroll down to where it says open another screen and we want it to open the game screen. So now when we click the start button, it'll immediately go to the game screen. So what are we going to have on the game screen? For this, we're going to make use of the drawing and animation menu in the palette. So let me click on that. And there are several things that are available here. There's a ball, there's a canvas, and an image sprite. So a canvas is a surface upon which things can be drawn. So we're going to go ahead and drag a canvas over here. And we're going to have this completely fill the game screen. So I'm going to have the height fill parent. I'm going to have the width fill the parent. And then atop the canvas, I want to have an object that moves around. And so for that, I'm going to use what's called an image sprite. So the game that I'm going to put together is loosely inspired by the 70s, 80s classic Space Invaders. There'll be a spaceship that moves left and right and fires missiles going upward. So notice when I, so I want you to watch over here on the right at the XYZ as I move around the image sprite. So if I drag it up to the upper left corner, we see that we've got really small X and Y values. If I go all the way up to the corner, well, I, I went slightly off the corner and they actually became negative. Um, still ever so slightly off. You know what? I'm just going to type in what I want. I want X zero and Y zero. So this is really interesting to note. The origin for the coordinate system of objects on this uh, screen is zero, zero. So the origin is the upper left corner up here. So if I move something from left to right, the X and coordinate will increase. So I'm just going to drag this over and the X is now 143. And if I drag it downward, say to the middle, then the Y increases. And so I'm going to kind of drag it to the bottom. And so it's just something you have to get used to when thinking about how objects move on a display. The origin Zero, zero is the upper left corner and making Y bigger makes it go down. And this is really, really different than what you saw in math class in high school or what have you, where y, a bigger Y meant that you went up. Here, a bigger Y means that you go down. 
Now this is an image sprite and to make it look like something we need a picture. So I'm going to click on the picture field and I'm going to choose a file to upload. Now, as it happens, I had um, grabbed a photograph of the space shuttle for this purpose. And so I've got this space shuttle picture here at the bottom of the canvas. So now that I've got a space shuttle, I want to be able to move it left and right. So here's how we'll do it. If you uh, tap anywhere on the canvas, it'll change the X coordinate for the space shuttle to be the X coordinate of wherever you tapped, but it's always going to keep the Y coordinate at the bottom. Now, it's not immediately obvious what we want this Y coordinate to be. Let's take a little time to think about that. So if I move the space shuttle to 0x and 0y, notice that the upper left corner of the image is also the upper left corner of the screen. So if I want my image to be completely visible, it means that my Y coordinate can't be so big that it sends us off the screen. That would be a problem. Now, uh, how is it that we can avoid that? Well, let's go on over to the blocks and start programming it so that it lines up where we want it. So I'm going to go over to game screen. And we'll say when game screen gets initialized, we want to place our image sprite so that it's in the middle of the bottom. And so for that, we can use the set image sprite X and set image sprite Y blocks. So where exactly is it going to go? Well, we want the X to be in the middle of the canvas. So we can ask the canvas for its width. Now, if we want it in the middle of the canvas, then we need to divide that width by two, like so. Now, what about the Y? We want it so the bottom edge of our image sprite is at the bottom of the screen and the top edge is not. And when we set the Y coordinate, what we're really setting is the top of, uh, it, we're setting the Y coordinate of the top of the image. So to that end, what we're gonna do is a subtraction. We want to take the height of the canvas. So let's take the canvas's height. And we want to subtract from this the height, whoops, wrong object, go away, the height of the image sprite. So the image sprite has a height, here it is, like so. And that should put it roughly where we want. So let's test this out and see how it works. So I'm going to switch back to screen one. And I am going to connect my AI companion. Just a moment. And I am scanning my QR code now. And so the app is about to come up over here. All right, so here's my start screen, and I'm going to go ahead and hit my start button. And now, check it out. My space shuttle is nice and at the middle uh, of the bottom down there. But not quite the middle now, is it? All right? Um, you know, go ahead and put it on your own device and, and check this out. And what you'll see is that the middle is actually the left edge is in the middle. So what if we really want it centered? Then we're gonna to have to do somewhat different math over here. So that's my first uh, challenge for you in this video, is go ahead and pause the video and think about how would you modify the math over here so that the center of the image is aligned with the center of the canvas as opposed to the left edge. 
try it out, experiment, and then come back and I'll show you my solution. Welcome back. So let's go ahead and think about how we're going to center it. So to do this, we need to not just divide the width of the canvas by two, but what we found is that leaves us not in the best position, right? So if we look back at the image, what we see is that we are too far to the, to the right, right? We actually want to back up a little bit. We need to subtract something from this so that it's properly centered. And what we want to subtract is half the width of our space shuttle image. So we need a subtraction block. So we're going to use canvas divided by two as a starting point, but then we need to subtract from it half the width of our image. And so we're going to get in another divide block. And for that matter, we can get in another number two. Now we go over to our image sprite and we're going to ask for its width. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and restart the app because right now we actually don't have uh, a good way to get to the back to the start screen so that we can see it initialized. So let's uh, we're going to get there eventually. We're just not there yet. So I'm going to go ahead and scan the QR code, get the app back. And so the app is slowly coming up. Okay, and now check it out. S notice that like the little circle icon on my Android device here is now totally perfectly centered with my space shuttle. So I have now centered it correctly on my game screen. Very, very cool. Okay, so now let's think about moving this around. So what we're going to do is watch for when is it that the user touches the canvas. What is the location where the user touches the canvas? And then we need to scoot the space shuttle over to that location. So let's go over to the canvas and notice that there are a number of different when blocks here. So a when block just says, when this thing happens, do something. So when the user touches down on our canvas, we want to change the X coordinate of our sprite so that it lines up with that X coordinate that we got. So it's going to be really, really similar actually to this block over here. Instead of it being based on the canvas though, we instead want it to be based on our X coordinate that we touched. So we're going to get some X coordinate and then we need to shift it over a bit so that it's actually touching it in the middle. So uh, here's the app. And now notice as I touch it, it moves to where I touch. Pretty nifty. Wherever I touch, there it is. Now I can touch up here. And it still only moves it left and right because that's all I've programmed it to do. You know, down here, I set the X coordinate accordingly. Okay. Because this is, you know, inspired by space invaders and we're going to imagine uh, firing uh, upward from the bottom of the screen. All right. So next little challenge is I would like you to write a procedure to set the X coordinate for our image sprite. So notice that both when we initialized it and when we um, touched the canvas, we had to subtract the width divided by two. So what I want you to do is make it a procedure where it's got an input representing the X coordinate where we want it, and then it sets that image sprite to go there. So pause the video, write that procedure block, come back and I'll show you how I do it. Welcome back. So I'm going to create a procedure and this is going to be a do procedure because it just changes something. It has a side effect and I'm going to call this move spaceship. OK, 
Okay. And so whenever we move the spaceship, we need to give it an input. And this time, X is actually exactly the right variable name. It's the X coordinate of the spaceship that we wish to alter. And as it happens, I can literally copy this block over because here we had X coordinate and then the parameter named X and they both just kind of work. So let's now introduce some procedure calls. So we are going to put in a call to move spaceships, my new move spaceship block. We'll call it and it will pass in the X value of where I touched the canvas and that'll call move spaceship there. And then let's get another call to move spaceship up here. And now where we're moving it to is the canvas one width divided by two. So we're going to go ahead and delete those blocks. And now let's go ahead and disconnect and reset the connection. We'll restart our app. And let's introduce a new connection. You know, so by the way, whenever you start your app from here and it's an app with multiple screens, whichever screen you were most recently working on is the screen where it's going to start. And that's why it's going to start here with our uh, outer space screen. Okay. And it puts it in the right spot. And when I click, it still puts it exactly where my finger touched. All right, very nice, very, very cool. So, so far so good, um, but to be something like space invaders, we need an invader. So that's what we're gonna do next. So let's go back to the designer. We need to add an invader. And just to showcase the ball, so you could do an invader with an image sprite, um, but I want to show you the ball as well. So I'm going to drag a ball to represent our space invader. I'm going to make our space invader red. You know, for this to be outer space, I bet our, our canvas should probably be black. Let me click on the canvas. Let's make its background color black. Yeah, that looks a lot more space invader -y. Um, So let's make the invader bigger. So I'm going to change its radius from 5 to 30. So that looks kind of intimidating. And yeah, kind of center it there for now. It doesn't really matter where we put these, right? I mean, you could just use the locations you drag them to, and that would be functional. Um, but of course, these are both going to be things that move around. And so programming them to go where we want, I think is actually pretty important. So this is gonna be our space invader. And what we're gonna have it do is drift left and right. And when it hits an edge, it'll bounce and then start drifting the other way and so forth. So let's program it to do these things. So for starters, what we want to do is have the space invader appear at the top of the screen. So you can manipulate a ball very, very similarly to how you manipulate an image sprite. You can use set to set the X and the Y coordinates of a ball. Move this aside. So where do we want them? So I'm going to set its Y coordinate to be a short distance from the top of the screen. So I'm going to make it about 10. Now, why do I want to do that? The main reason is that there is a when block that detects when a ball or an image sprite contacts the edge of the app. And so if I had the Y coordinate at zero, it would be always touching the edge and then it would just keep shooting off this when block all the time, which would get very, very irritating. So a nice small Y value keeps it near the top without it triggering hitting the top. All right, so now what about it's starting X value? Uh, doesn't really matter much because it's going to be moving around, but we'll start it in roughly the middle. So we will use canvas one width divided by two. But there's a little bit more that we're going to need. Namely, we want it moving. And for it to move, we need to give the ball a speed. So 
Um, let's initial give it some initial speed. Let's just find out what a speed of 10 even looks like. The last thing we're going to need is we're going to need to give it a heading. So in what direction is this ball moving? Now these heading values are angles in degrees. Okay. And a, and we'll just start it at zero actually. And let's find out what zero degrees looks like. So let's try this out. I am going to, okay. So let's um, again, reset the connection. Uh, oh, reset connection. Okay. And then let's do AI companions. Let me bring up my AI companion app. I am now about to scan the QR code. And check it out. Oh, whoops. Um, so the ball started moving and then it drifted all the way to the edge and now it's stuck there. So we want to do something about that. So this does tell us something useful that a heading of zero went to the right of the app. So a heading of 180 will go left. So let's go over to a ball and we're going to use the when ball edge reached block to decide what to do next. So when this happens, we just need to change the ball's heading so that it goes the other way. But of course, we need to think carefully about what that heading is going to be, right? If the heading is zero, then we want it to go to 180. And if the heading is 180, then we want it to go to zero. So last time we looked at the if then block, what we're going to look at now is the if then else block. So the idea of if then else is we give it a condition and if the condition is true, then we're going to do the then. And if it's false, we're going to do the else. So let's do a comparison. So if ball one's heading, so ball one's heading is equal to zero, okay? Then we want to set ball one's heading to be 180 degrees, and this should enable it to, to bounce nicely. Now, if it's not zero, that means it's already 180, and that means we want to set it back to zero so that it bounces the other way. So now let's bring up my app and check it out. It is now bouncing. And so this is what a speed of 10 looks like. Um, it's kind of like this. Now, because we only changed the speed in the initialize, we'd have to restart the app to see what it would look like to alter the speed. But, you know, we could just play with it here. We could have it, uh, whoops, do that. We could have it, we could have it go a little faster once it hits a wall, so like, what would it look like? Oh, whoops, my phone screensaver kicked in. Just let it sit in there a little too long. All right, so it's still happily moving around. Let's have it speed up to 50 the next time it hits the left wall. So this will just give it a moment. Oh, man, yeah, 50 is a lot faster. You know, I, I really like the 10, I think, because I think that's going to give me as a player a chance to actually hit it. So 10 looks like a pretty good speed. But now speaking of hitting it, right? I mean, I can move my dude around, but I can't actually fire at it, right? I haven't programmed a way to do that. So that'll be next. Let's go ahead and add a missile to this. And we'll just use another ball uh, for a missile. And let's go ahead and make the missile White. So I'm going to name these balls, by the way. So this one is the Space Invader. And then this one is going to be the Player Missile. The Player Missile. Okay. So now initially, when I start my program, when I initialize, my Player Missile 
hasn't been fired yet. So I'm actually going to make it invisible. Invisible. So I'm going to set player missile visible to false. To false. So now how am I going to fire? Well, when I tap on the canvas, that's when I move the spaceship. But if I tap on the spaceship itself, that's how I'm going to fire the missile, I think. Okay. So let me go over to my image sprite. And when I touch down on the image sprite, that is when I am going to fire my missile. Okay. So where am I going to fire it from? I, I want to fire it from like the tip of my spaceship, right? So I'm going to go over to player missile and whoops i didn't want to examine the y i want to change the y okay so i want to set my player missile y to be whatever the y coordinate is for my image sprite that is i'm going to have it start from the top of the spaceship oh of course i want it to be visible so let's make it visible so i'm going to change visible to be true. I want to be able to see the missile at this point. And it's Y will be that. Now, how about it's X? Well, it's X should also be the same as the X for my image sprite. So let me do that. Uh, so I want to change the player missile X to image sprite X. Okay, and so that should suffice to fire a missile. All right, so let's go ahead and restart um, this because this is all new. And I had sadly disconnected from the AI companion. So let me scan QR code and it's coming up. And here it is. So I've got the spaceship. I can move him around. And if I click on the ship, well, it doesn't do anything, right? Because I haven't actually told my missile to move. So I need to give my missile a speed and a heading. Okay, so let's go ahead and ask the missile for a speed and a heading. So I need a speed and a heading. Okay. So I think I want my missile to be, you know, faster than my bad guy. So if my bad guy has a speed of 10, let's give my missile a speed of 100. Now let's think about the heading. Well, if zero degrees goes from um, left to right, and 180 degrees goes from right to left, well, maybe 90 degrees is somewhere in the middle. So let's give that a shot, both literally and figuratively, because, of course, I'm about to fire. Fire a missile. I think I am. Uh, maybe it's going too fast. Let's try, let's try it slow first. Huh. Doesn't seem to be firing when I touch this guy. I mean, I've set the missile to visible. I've set its X and Y coordinates. Um, you know, maybe the heading isn't good. Maybe I need 270. All right, I'm pretty sure it's 90 though. So I'm gonna switch it back to now. I'm gonna restart the app just in case I mess something up in the missile. Oh, I gave it no paint color. Actually, that's the issue. I need the paint color to be white and not nothing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 now it's firing. So whenever I tap, it fires a missile. Okay, very cool. Yeah, 
So, yeah, so the error I made there, this is pretty funny. With the missile, there's a paint color of none, which looks white, and then there's a paint color of white. And I selected none, which meant when I was firing it, it didn't actually appear. Um, but what I wanted was white. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, now, notice, you know, so when I fire it, notice it's firing from the left-hand side. So next little challenge, pause the video and change the code for firing the missile so that it fires from the center of the spaceship and not from the side. So pause it, try it out, and then I'll show you how I do it. Welcome back. Uh, really, it's a problem very similar to what we were dealing with when positioning the spaceship itself. So whenever I fire, it's coming from the left-hand side, the left-hand side of the spaceship. And I really want it in the middle. And when I look at it carefully, I see it needs to move to the right. So I'm gonna need to be adding to the X coordinate. So uh, over here, I'm gonna set the player missile to image sprite X plus, now I need half the width of my image sprite so that it winds up in the middle. And so now when I fire, it actually comes, whoops, you can actually see it coming more from the middle of the spaceship, which is pretty cool. All right, so next we need our missile to destroy the space invader. So we need to do collision detection. So there is a when block for this as well. We can say when player missile has collided with some other, then we can do a thing. So here we're once again going to need an if block. Why? Because we need to know what it collided with. We need to know specifically that other is referring to the space invader. So let's make sure that they are the same. So if get other is equal to the space invader, then you won. And so we want to end the game and go to some kind of victory screen. So let's add a victory screen to our app. What? Let's start. Oh, did I put a space in there? I think I, my typing was sloppy. Okay, there we go. So I've now added a new screen known as the victory screen. And so on the victory screen, Let's uh, let's put a canvas there. Uh, drawing an animation, so I'm going to put uh, a canvas, and I'm going to say fill the parent. So it's similar to what we did with the other, and now um, within this canvas, there is a pretty cool block for drawing text. So when we initialize the victory screen, we are going to draw some text on our canvas. So we're going to draw U1. And we're going to put it roughly in the middle. And so we will find out the width and the height of our canvas, and we are going to divide these by two. So math divided by two. And we're going to need two of these. Boom, boom, boom. Oops, I need to do that. And boom, like so. And then we're going to add a button to play again. So let's add a button, play again. And when we hit play again, we want to resume the game. So the play again button, when that's clicked, let's rename the button to be play again button. So when the play again button is clicked, we are going to open 
another screen, namely the game screen. All right, very neat. Now let's go back to the game screen and figure out what happens when the game ends. So when the game ends, we um, found out that the missile uh, touched the space invader. We can open the victory screen. Like so. And now I'm going to go back to screen one, the original screen, and we're just going to take the game from the top. So we're going to start at the start screen and um, and go from there. Oops, I got a little error message here uh, on my victory screen. Hmm. Well, we'll deal with it later. All right, never mind. Let me go back to screen one and let's um, let's go ahead and reconnect the app. Sorry. So let's go to AI Companion and let's scan. Oh, whoops. Sorry, just a second. I had to close my AI companion. Okay, now I'm scanning the QR code. Okay. So now, oh, whoops, I'm on the wrong screen. I wanted to start it on, not the game screen. I wanted to start it on screen. Okay, no, it started on screen one. Okay. So I'm going to hit start game. And now my game is playing and oh, whoops. Notice you can actually only fire the missile um, one at a time. Oh, almost, almost got it. So this isn't all that great a game. Obviously you need to be kind of patient with it. Uh, you know what? I, I think I'm already going to just increase the speed of my missile to a hundred. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. All right, and I won, and it displayed the message uh, that, that you won. There we go. And then there's the play again button. And when I play again, here goes my game. And I've got my guy doing his thing. And I won. So there it is. That's a video game right there. Um, admittedly, not a super challenging video game like the Space Invader ought to fire back, for example. Um, and that's something that that we could add. But the video has probably gone on long enough at this point. Um, and I wanted you to see all of the components of a working game. So what were some really key ideas we explored um, in this? So one idea we explored is the notion of multiple screens. And this is a really useful idea in a lot of apps. We then explored um, the when blocks. And so these are what are known as events. A when block is when this event happens, you're going to respond in this way. We made use of both if then and if then else. We learned to jump between screens and we learned about the XY layout idea, the origin being in the upper left corner. So hope you had fun building your first video game and I'll talk to you soon.